Crested geckos are a species of reptile I've always loved and enjoyed breeding. This year I decided to take you along for the ride, from Rambo's arrival and unboxing, to introducing and pairing him up to Pingu and Nona. Sleepless nights making an effort to film the girls laying, to digging up and incubating the eggs. Today is an exciting day everybody, because 86 days after collecting the first clutch of eggs from Pingu on March 31st, I have the pleasure of introducing my first two baby crested geckos of the year to you all. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. If you're new to this channel, I want to take this opportunity to let you know that I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future content. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. Yeah, I know, you guys aren't in a tank or anything like that. I really had this idea to have you in an egg, but the Crested Gecko told me that there just wasn't enough room for all of you and them, so blame the gecko. All jokes aside, friends, I am thrilled to be sharing with you today that we are going to be taking a look at the first two Crested Geckos produced of the season. And I'm just going to be really honest with you, it's been so hard for me not to show you all a picture on Instagram or anywhere else. I will say in all honesty, if you're a patron over on Patreon, you've already seen both of them. But that's kind of one of the perks with being a patron and supporting the channel that way. And on that same note, I would like to take a quick moment to say thank you so much to our two newest channel patrons. We have Simon and Zalber Garden. I hope I'm pronouncing that user right. You didn't leave a name there for the last one. But thank you very much for choosing to support the channel. And if anyone else is wondering about how they can support the channel, of course, there's the merch store. But I also have my Patreon page where by becoming a patron for as little as $2 a month, you can unlock different tiers, see the new baby geckos, and a whole bunch of other cool features depending on the tier. So I'll leave it at that, but I just wanted to take a quick moment, as I always do, to thank the newest patrons for helping support the channel. So already, let's get into it. We'll go check out the little incubation container and see the two geckos. Holy... Now that is a crested gecko. Look at this lily white! Oh my goodness. Look at the head structure on that guy already. Oh my goodness, look at this little cutie. The first baby crested geckos hatch. And what luck we've been blessed with. It's a lily white. Oh my goodness. Let's see if we can get the sibling hatching on camera if we're lucky. I'm going to give it a shot. You can see here the slit where the baby emerged from the egg. But look at the color on this amazing baby. I just got to say this is a beautiful gecko. It's so exciting to finally have some crusties here again. Very, very happy about this. All right, everyone. So I made an effort to catch the clutch made hatching. As you can see, I did it. But well, the problem was I preemptively put the night vision setting on, assuming the gecko would hatch while the lights were off. As you'll see from this footage, I did my best to mess around with the color so that you could at least see something there hatching. But this little guy decided to hatch under the lights in broad daylight. So you'll notice partway through the clip, you'll see them very clearly, but that's when the lights actually went off. So this cheeky bugger didn't want you getting the best view possible. Hope you understand and still enjoy the footage. Okay, everybody, look at these babies. 
my, oh my, they are stunning. Yup. If you know, you know, friends, we were lucky enough to hit two Lily Whites in one clutch. Now I'm gonna be really honest with you all. I didn't know that this was kind of like a big deal or, or pretty cool until my buddy Mike Titula actually messaged me and was like, dude, this doesn't happen that often. And I had no idea. I was incredibly appreciative and, and excited that we hit two Lily Whites and look at them they're so beautiful and they have really nice crests too like I'm, I'm excited to see how these will develop but yeah um apparently it's not the most common thing ever let alone hitting a lily white so this is so cool it's just incredible we're off to such a great start they're so beautiful what i really love is this one here is sort of more yellow and light colored and i feel like this is sort of normal if you remember seeing footage of pingu she was a little bit like this a lot of lily whites will start off with that kind of yellowy color and as they mature and see all that pattern will start to go white and this will probably expand and take up a lot of this base color but then we have this one and it's just significantly darker i mean if you see the two side by side this one's kind of out of the light. Oh my gosh, they're so light. You can see that compared to this one, this one here is, is pretty dark, but nonetheless, it is a lily white. So very, very cool. So now the next step we're going to do is actually put these guys into their future enclosures because it's obviously time to move them out of this and house them properly. When it comes to housing baby crested geckos, I've found that plastic bins work fantastic. Not only do they hold humidity, they're very cheap and affordable and easy to modify to meet the requirements needed. Here from previous footage in another video, you'll see how I design my containers. We use the Dremel tool to drill out cross ventilation holes and I'm very unsafely cutting out the plastic square where I will then glue in some nylon mosquito mesh screen to provide additional ventilation in the lid. Simple, I'll post links down below in the description to purchase your own Dremel tool if you'd like. And uh, yeah, those are the containers, very straightforward. Okay everyone, so as I pointed out, they have cross ventilation here that I've drilled on the containers. It helps with airflow. The first thing we're going to do is lay down a piece of paper towel. Now I'm all for bioactive and having substrate in there to help maintain humidity, but trust me, it's a lot safer to raise neonates or baby geckos on paper towel for the first few months of life. This will prevent any potential impaction or other issues that can arise for the sensitive and very small gecko. Following this setup is very easy. We're going to add an assortment of artificial foliage to help the animal feel safe and secure, as well as a branch for climbing. We're also going to choose some foliage that has rather large leaves, and these will often be used by the baby gecko to curl up and sleep in. You can see that one of the leaves in particular is folded there, and that'll probably be a favorable spot for the animal to do that. Next, I'm going to add a shallow water dish. For this little takeout cup, I'm not going to fill it all the way, just because I'm a little nervous about the potential of drowning. I think it's a minimal risk, but why not be safe? We're gonna fill that water dish a little less than halfway. Now, as far as feeding the animals go, I got these awesome little rubber feeding dishes from a company called Reptiles or Us. Now this isn't a sponsored recommendation, I just wanna say it's a great product and I'm really happy with them. So check out that website, I'm pretty sure they ship to the US as well if you're looking to get some nice little feeding cups like that. And voila, there we have it. Now all we need to do is set up a second one for the next baby and we're all set. Now friends, in our past videos, we've talked a lot about our hopes and aspirations, what we'd like to be breeding and keeping. But 
since we're now pretty far into the year, I want to ask you all for today's question of the day. What are you currently producing? What is actually breeding for you this year? If you are someone who is breeding reptiles, that's awesome. I'd love to hear about what you've been producing. However, I don't want to close this opportunity to answer a question off to only those who are breeding. That's a bit exclusive. So if you haven't mentioned it before, feel free to share what you would love to breed in the future someday. If breeding is something you'd like to do. If it's not, maybe explain why. There's an opportunity for everyone to answer the question if they'd like. Awesome. As always, I'll give you a comment and a heart, and then we can engage in a little bit of a conversation down below. All right, everybody. So now we're going to go ahead and come here and put our little geckos into their new homes, and uh, we're ready. So before we put any of the baby crested geckos into their enclosures, I would like to first weigh them. So just to kind of start from the get-go, or should I say from the gecko, haha, <laughs> great joke. We're going to weigh them in grams. So I don't imagine that these little cuties are gonna weigh much, obviously. The first baby we'll put onto the scale. <laughs> ah, love it. This is why we have a smaller scale. This one should be able to get it. There we go. Are we on grams? Yes, we are. Our little baby. Here, can you sit there? Could probably put them in a deli cup, but if we can get their whole body on here, that works too. Okay, so according to this pretty sensitive device, we're at 1.74 grams. So almost two grams for the first baby. So what do we do with that information? Well, first, let's put them into their future home. Come here, you. Okay, little baby. Off we go. There you go. Welcome home. <laughs> there they go. It's a big, big world in there, but they'll do great. Now, I want to also emphasize that personally, I prefer to house my crested geckos individually. It occurs very seldomly, but I have had the odd animal bite off its sibling's tail. And that's something we want to avoid unless we like frog butt geckos, because as you know, crested geckos don't grow their tails back. So I just prefer to house them separately, lets you monitor their feeding much more easily because you know that they're the only animal in the enclosure, there's no competition, etc. So um, if you have a ton of geckos that you're producing, by all means, you can probably safely keep at least clutch mates together in an enclosure this size for a few months, no issues. But I'm not producing that many crested geckos, so I have the resources, I have the space to house each one like this individually. That's why I'm doing it that way. And so what we're going to do is create a label. So, I mean, I might eventually get into some of these new apps people are using. I think it's a great step in the right direction. Uh, but for now, we're going to write Pingu Clutch number one. Because again, we don't need any like codes or anything like that because there's so few geckos that we're going to be working with this year as far as like breeding crusties goes. Uh, but we're going to write 1.74 gram. And then I'm going to just continue writing them here, 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 like the weights. So we'll go from this way to this way. We're gonna run out of room fast, but it'll at least let us monitor. Maybe once a month we'll weigh the animal, right? So, and then that little label can just go here. So we know. Now we'll do the next baby. Okay, so they weighed 1.77 grams, a little bit more than their sibling. Let's put them into their new enclosure. There you go. Man, they're so cute. All right, they're home. How wonderful. Get the lid on. And then, and we're good. Perfect. Well, friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I can't tell you how ecstatic I am that this season is in full force. We have our first two crested geckos, and we're going to be expecting the first two lychees to hatch soon, followed by Nona's clutch. And after that, we should be expecting the first of several satanic leaf tail geckos to start hatching too. All right, everyone. Thank you so much again for watching. If you want to see more videos about breeding crested geckos, check out the playlist up above. 
And I can't wait to see you guys all on Friday for our next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.